In Project 4, we're going to work with creating and doing some very basic formatting of tables. As you can tell, I am a bit of a geek and I'm a huge Doctor Who fan. So I've created a table based on the series of Doctor Who. And since it has reincarnated <clears throat> since in the recent century, we've been through three Doctors, the 9th, 10th, and 11th. And you can see who their companions were, who the actor was, and the years <clears throat> that they served. The information isn't important here. What's really important is how we created and styled this page. So again, you're pretty familiar with everything I've done up here. I've added some very simple um, CSS styling to the body. I've put in a font family. I've made the font size a little larger. You'll notice I am tending to use a larger font size than I would probably normally use in good web design. I'm doing that just to make things really clear if you're viewing this on a smaller YouTube screen. I've included a H1 where I've changed the color, the font size, and the text align. Text align is, is it aligned left, middle, or right in the page, middle being center. Then I have my TH. This is a table header as opposed to just a cell. For the table header, these are my headers, and I've created some special styling for them. I put in a font weight, making them bolder. I've done a text line of center. I've set a background color, and I've put in a padding of three pixels so that they don't get too closed in. And so those are my styles for the page. In the body, I've put in my title up here, Recent Doctors, the H1. I've left a blank line, and then I've created a table. I've set the width to 80%. That makes it 80% of the page. So if I resize it smaller, the table will only go to a minimum amount, allowing all of the headings to work properly. But then we'll resize to be 80% of the screen size and get larger and smaller. I have a border of 1. That's giving you this 1 pixel border here. Cell padding of 2, giving a little bit of spacing between the text and what's around it. Let's talk about padding. In the box model, and this is a really important CSS concept, we have our actual content, which is the actor's name, then we have the padding of two. And since I put a padding of two, it didn't say left padding or right padding, that puts two pixels completely surrounding, and that's at a minimum, so there will be a minimum of two pixels surrounding every different text item in these in here. I have zero for a border around his name, and then I have zero for the margin. Padding is inside the border. Margin is outside of the border, whether it exists or not. So you can see here, this is the margins, borders, padding content. This is what's referred to as the box model, and it's how we control spacing using CSS. And this is my favorite way to show you what's going on. I'm actually going to close. Now, we'll leave this open because I want it to be a little bit larger, but I'm going to come back to this probably. So we have the table created. We've aligned the table to the center, and we've put a title on it of Recent Doctors. And that title shows up just like it would on an image. It's a title that's for the mouse over. It's a tool tip. And then we have in the top row, this is my table row, I've set every different cell. Each cell is an opening and closing TH. That means it's a table header that we've applied the formatting to. For the other rows, only the first cell is a TH, a header with the special padding, uh, formatting. And then the rest are just TD, they're cells. And each cell has its content between the tags. We close the row, we start a new row, and we put in more information. Again, TH for the front, each information closing, TR closing. That ends the table, that ends the page, and that's what we have going on here. So you can see we've got the whole body going through here, 
and for each element, you can open it up and see what's in it. And I kind of like this format for looking at things. You can see them a little bit better this way. And if you want to see the CSS, it's all right in here in between the styles. So you can play with the different ways of viewing this. You can look at the fonts. And it should show us all the fonts used in the page. It's not doing that. It's not finding the CSS properties. Let's make sure. Hmm. Not showing everything that it should. It's probably not noticing the CSS properties because it's not linking externally. That's an interesting bug. There we go. There's our fonts. So we have Tahoma which shows you what we're using, and that's our font that I picked, because it picked the first one from the font family. So you're going to create your own table according to the specifications in Canvas. Don't recreate mine. Yours is going to have a different number of table cells, and your table cells are just how many TDs or THs that you're putting in each row. So you're going to have more rows, more cells going across, and completely original content. I want you to play with the cascading style sheets and change the formatting of the header cells, possibly the background. Play with it a little. Have some fun.